have been booming and we found out too. What are you doing about your business? Do you want more clients? Do you want more people to know about the services that you do provide? Do you have a luncheon coming? What about your premieres? Call NBC. Advertise your birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, church program, or request our coverage at your function. NBC, at your service 24-7. Call 832-887-6452 or call 281-888-9502. NBC, your favorite station, sharing African views. Welcome to Azobia Market. People assume quality car insurance has to cost more. People assume too much. The truth is, drivers who switched to Allstate last year saved money and got better protection. So get the facts, because you know what they say about people who assume. They pay more for car insurance than you and me. Call Coyote Arjunaku, 9903 State Highway 6 South, Suite 600, Sugarland, Texas 77498. Telephone 713. 776-3275. A very good morning to you, uh, the good people of Houston. Good morning. My name is Oluwani Shala, and uh, it is dawn on NBC this morning. Uh, I'm really hoping that you've had a fantastic week. Uh, it didn't really end well yesterday for very many people. If you've not been uh, um, uh, abreast with what's happening in the world, uh, Paris is on... I don't know if I can call it attack, but um, I, I think I, I, I have a feeling that it's kind of synonymous with Friday the 13th. Th th maybe they tried to uh, plan that, maybe, uh, but it has been horrendous. It has been really very horrific. Uh, starting off on that note this morning, uh, not so cheering, but well, we're here. And uh, Prof is here with me. Good morning. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning Houston. Houston. How was your week? Uh, it was fantastic, like you said, but mm. it didn't end well yeah, yesterday. It didn't, yesterday end well at all. it didn't end well at all. My son was actually the first person that sent me a text that, do I see what's going on around the world? He actually didn't mention, so I went straight into my phone. And I, I really, I, 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 it sounds, it might sound cliche, but I really couldn't sleep last night because I, mm -hmm. I have a couple of friends on Facebook who, uh, uh, as I yesterday, went wearing my pies, and I was really very scared for them for the bodies and everything and you know the people went out yesterday to have a good time with their family and friends and it ended that way it uh, was indeed i'm going to call it a bloodbath so talk to me prof yeah but look terrorists we, we um, understand that the death toll as at this morning is about like 150, 158 yeah. about 200 it okay. was still they're still not sure of the, of, of the particular amount of but it is it is terrible 
Yeah, you know, when eight young men, I mean, I don't care what religion they have. Not masked. They, they, were, they were not masked. We understand they were masked. I mean, and they were willing to kill themselves. They had um, uh, everything also well planned and to blow themselves up at the end and all that. I mean, it's a shame, I mean, that uh, in this day and age, in the culture in which we live in, this is really an open society. I mean, open societies now have to be so scared. I mean, uh, the shopping and the times in America where we're already massed together, doing shopping in the malls and all that is coming in America. I'm not trying to scare anybody, mm -hmm. but it's something that, you know, you know, crosses my, careful you know, crosses about, my mind, and, uh, you know. Uh, but... Oh, well, we, we understand that uh, reports say that terrorists uh, wielding AK-47s and throwing explosives ex executed at least 118 people uh, inside a Paris concert hall at the Bataclan late Friday night. In a massacre that followed coordinated attacks that killed at least 40 more people uh, rocking the French capital, prompting a president of Francois Hollande uh, to a uh, close the entire nation's borders and declare a state of emergency. The death toll has increased. I'm, I'm not going to give numbers now, but we're still saying about 158, mm -hmm. according to the latest reports. And high witnesses uh, said that the terrorists all looked very young. They walked into the theater and started shooting at people like they were birds. He said they stood at the back of the theater in black clothing without covering their faces with any mask. And they kept shooting and reloading for about 10 to 15 minutes. I can't imagine. Ah. I can't imagine what will be going on in the minds of the people there. This is, how, this is where we know things are really bad. France has not been in a state of emergency. No. It's not closed its borders since 1944. Think, I don't think it has. It, it's, I mean, this is how long... At the, I mean, at the stadium, at the, yeah. at, the, at the concert, at a restaurant, it, well, you know what, I'm just going to end it this way. I know that when the, when, 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 when the power of love overco overcomes the, uh, the love of power, I'm sure that the world will know peace. And our thoughts and prayers to uh, our, our fans, we're, we're sure and we're hoping that, yes, it will all uh, work out well at the end of the day. I'm beginning to think that um, this is coming as, because uh, I, I think I, I read it in the news over the week about this um, ISIS uh, uh, guy, the jihadist John. Uh, I think the U.S. Uh, claimed that they, he, yeah, he's, he's been, been hit, killed, yeah. but we're not sure. Well, they're not sure about this. They say they're ninety-nine percent. I mean, I don't think this. Uh, some people have said is it a retaliation? I think but, it is because well, look, we can't keep looking at every act of those people as retaliation. But ISIS you know. has claimed that they are responsible. Yeah, for they, this. They, they don't. They said so, but okay. you know, I don't think it's retaliation. They have a mindset. Mm. They have an ideology which they are carrying out. Mm. I mean, really, the first thing we know is that they are trying to terrorize mm. the Western world. It's a different culture in which they don't believe in, even though most of them grew up in that culture. But they are re resenting that culture, and that's really what is bothersome, because you don't know who actually is against the, the, the culture in which you live in. Well, uh, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. We're hoping, as I, like I said, our prayers with them, and we're sure that everything will work out well at the end of the day. That's like my, should I call that my mantra? Like my, I say that all the time well, because yeah. I believe that it will eventually work out at the end. Well, there's once there's, there's going to be peace. Yeah, once there's life, there's always hope. So yeah. we always uh, hope that things get better. All right, so moving on, uh, on to news uh, from uh, the home front, Nigeria. Uh, on Wednesday, Nigeria's uh, new ministers uh, were uh, sworn in and their portfolios. It was, <laughs> it was a big one. Especially with the uh, uh, former Lagos State Governor, Professor uh, Nairaji Fashala, with the most important of the portfolios. Well, why do we really think? Uh, I mean, yeah, a lot of people are saying that. one. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was the, funny. It was, and then it, was, it was a huge buzz on Twitter and all social media platforms over the week. Uh, some, some even made a joke out of it that, okay, Babatine is the power, Raji is the works, mm. <laughs> Fashala is the housing and stuff. But I think it's, I think, I, I find it really very, very, very daring. Look, I have said this. I find, uh, it, I find it really daring, actually. Well, but let's go back to what really transpired. We had uh, nominees, ministerial nominees, that mm. were kind of screened or interviewed by the Senate, mm. not really knowing their portfolio. Mm -hmm. so we, I, people thought that he was going to get the FCT portfolio, yes, actually. Yes, you know, and I'm sure... I like that. I like the twist. 
I, I don't particularly like the truth because I actually wrote on my Facebook page and I used two ministers. I said, look, Miss Dr. Hanere, who is in, in, is in health, I mm. think is a minister of state health, mm -hmm. was interviewed. And I said, look, I don't think the right questions were asked because anybody that knows the Nigerian medical situation, what goes on in that country, to me, there are two very important issues in medicine in Nigeria. One is emergency health. Yeah. And then the second is prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. Most of the young people that have died in Nigeria, when I use the word young, just tending to be 60, have died. Were they young 60? Of, yeah, they have died. Really, have died. Sixties mm, young. Yeah, sixties young. Okay. Sixties should be young. I mean, you're, okay. you're still vibrant, full of life. Really, at sixty. Yes. Uh, and I'm a baby. And then when people <laughs> die, you know, you, you hear kidney, liver, mm -hmm. and all that. Look, the system shuts off because we Nigerians are self-medicating. Yeah. Nigerians are self-medicating. It's an it's a huge issue, and for anybody coming in as minister. Of Should health. tackle that first. Yes, and he wasn't asked those questions. One, because we don't know who's going to be the minister. The fact that he was a medical doctor, we didn't know what ministry I, he was I going thought, to. I thought they just tried to keep it under wraps. I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. Well, I mean, if those are the things we need to change, we need mm. to know who's going where so we can have the right questions and have his thoughts on certain things that plague You know country. what, uh, coming from what the uh, president uh, did reel out, the do's and don'ts mm -hmm. at the retreat uh, earlier on, I think yep. last week, the past week, mm -hmm. he did, uh, you know, uh, tell, uh, uh, urge them to, he gave, he gave them, he gave, he gave out some um, really good advice and asked them, you know what, foreign trips should be duly, duly relate. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a huge one. Uh, ministers must operate within lean resources. No more flamboyance. No more rancor between ministers and ministers of states. And then, you know what, what it, whatever it is that you've given to do, please make sure that you do the best that you can at it. So let's just hope that, you know what, maybe we didn't get as much information as, as we should have uh, during the screening. Let's just hope that they have the portfolios now and they will do the best that they can to make sure that it counts. Well, look, I, I like the word you use, hope. Mm -hmm. And I would actually be like, let's pray. Let's pray that they actually know look i'm also part of the sports industry okay and look if i were to advise the sports minister mm -hmm. look there are not too many things he, you need to do mm. look you're talking about working on the lean uh, uh process like, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, things like that but the, and then the, the convoy you talked about the convoys as well well i'll even get to that there are three okay. things i would say the minister of sports should think about all right one how do you fund federations mm. two what would you do to some of the, uh, what, uh, the, what would you do to the two major stadiums in Nigeria? National Stadium, Suriliri, mm. and National Stadium in Abuja. Mm. Okay. And the third one is, um, I'm actually, even, uh, I, I, you I, can't I, remember. Yeah, I had that planned out. That, you know, if, 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 look, those two, yeah. really, funding of federations, is where he came in and is talking about corruption. That's true. Mm. But if you fund if you have a good mechanism in funding of federations, you're going to lessen... The burden. You know, you're actually going to lessen the issue of corruption because okay. now people will come in there knowing exactly that government funds are not 100% coming to my federation. I have to look for a percentage of what my budget is. It is going to be different ways, but again, we don't know that, mm -hmm. and we hope and pray that they get it right this yes, time. Yes, you can, you can tweet at us uh, mm -hmm. at uh, NBC uh, TV Houston if, for your thoughts, uh, suggestions. Do you Prof? Do you not? Mm -hmm. I would like to hear from you. Uh, going over again to the new ministers and the portfolios, we're going to be uh, giving you some names in case you didn't catch any of this information. Uh, I'm just going to touch up on a few. Uh, Abubakar Malami is uh, going to be the, is the Minister of Justice. And there's Adamo Adamo, the Minister of Education. Uh, Kemi Adiosho, the Minister of Finance, uh, Chris Ngige, the Minister of Labor and Employment. Uh, Nigeria's had a field day with the uh, Minister of Transportation. <laughs> yeah, look. <laughs> Mr. Uh, yeah, let, let me just go back to someone. That was a very funny one. Adamo Adamo, Minister of Education. Mm. Now, what's the thing that's plaguing Nigerian education? Let's look at, let, I mean, unfortunately, let's start at the top tertiary university, in our university Ooh. systems. Now, how do you solve that? That is probably one of the biggest problems in it is, the, it is the biggest. We're producing, the biggest. We're producing grad, graduates that, you know, spend seven, eight years yeah. in school. But mostly half-baked as well. Well, look, we, yeah, we can call them half-baked, but look, how do you run an Nigerian university? How do you finance it? 
is it going to continue to be 100% government financed? There has to be, this has to be something that has to be put on the table for mm. a lot of discussion. Mm. So let's hope again the Minister of Education takes that up and mm. not just go with the usual thing and say, you know, talk a lot of uh, grammar <laughs> and nothing happens. <laughs> nothing in happens at the end of yeah. the day. Uh, Lai Mohammed is the Minister of Information. We expected that. Mm -hmm. uh, Kayade Faemi, the Minister of Solid Material. Uh, Aisha Al Hassan, Minister of Women Affairs, and the big one, I will say again, mm -hmm. uh, Babatine Fashala, the Minister of um, Power, Works, and Housing. Nigerians have called him Mr. Fix It. Well, good. Because, because power, you know, is, yeah, because, is, 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 is the biggest. Well, yeah, let me chip in there because, and they've gone to find a statement that Fashala made several years ago <laughs> that he can fix power in 90 days. So people have found that statement that he made when he was governor of Lagos State. Let's see how that works out so as a people minister. People are waiting to see. And I don't think it's going to happen in 90 days, but maybe we'll see the light at the end of the, the tunnel. tunnel. Yeah. Or we start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. He, he has actually but, assumed office. Yeah. Uh, hours uh, after he was named the new minister of uh, power, works and housing, Batini Fashila made his first appearance at the Ministry of Works, where he had a closed door session with the ministry's permanent secretary, Louis Edozian, and other directors, so as to chart a new course for the ministry. Uh, Fashila, in his address and his focus, I said his focus will be on how to bring together processes and activities of all the ministries now uh, put under his supervision for effective service delivery. He pledged to work with all the staff of the various ministries. And he says, first, we are here to work with you in solving problems on ground as quickly as possible. And uh, we want to know if some of those problems are man-made or systematic. So that's for that for the ministers and the portfolios. We will take a quick break now, a musical break actually. We'll come back and we have more trending issues and stories uh, just for you this morning on Dawn on NBC. Be right, we'll be right back. Thing. It is still dawn on NBC this morning, this beautiful Saturday morning uh, that was just from the Nigerian group, uh, defunct Nigerian group. Uh, the name is Kush, and that was uh, Let's Live Together. Uh, we're going to the um, Saraki story this morning. Uh, it, on, th on Thursday, the Supreme Court suspended uh, the Code of Conduct Tribunal's hearing on Saraki's case. Look, uh I think we've been. I think maybe in the last three months. I think every Saturday we have mentioned Sarakis Sarak name. name. <laughs> I, I think we first mentioned him when he had that his lovely coup. Yeah, took over I like that word, lovely. Yeah, because you know, look, it surprised everybody, mm. and then you know he took over. But the, again, the Supreme Court has, uh, the, has suspended the code of conduct tribunal that is hearing Saraki's case. I mean, the judge in particular who did that uh, was Mr. Justice uh, John Fabi, mm. who we've also known. You see, one thing happens in the country, you know. Funny. Yeah, he 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 suspends the case, and then we now find out. Yeah, he's right. It, it he, retiring. He's two retiring weeks. two weeks. Right? But that's interesting. I mean, the prosecutor of the Supreme Court case against Saraki has signed an undertaking to refrain himself from doing anything mm. at the tribunal until the determination of the suit, which is fine. I mean, look, no matter what we think, we're allowing the system the justice system take a course. Mm. And that's, I think, one thing every government should really try to establish, that you have a problem, let's take it to, to court. court. And let, the court there. Be, let the court be the last arbiter for every issue. It is, I, I found it actually really mm -hmm. very funny. Um, uh, um, the uh, uh, justice, uh, Justice John Fabi, mm -hmm. who on Thursday temporarily halted the corruption trial of Nigeria's Senate President Bukola Saraki at the court of conduct tribunal retires in two weeks so according to sources at the supreme court by law justice fabi is required to mandatorily retire That's from 70. the judiciary on november 25th when he turns 70. 
uh, because he was born on, on the 25th of November 1945. Now, uh, we understand that the Senate president has done everything possible to halt his arraignment on 13 counts of false declaration of assets using various maneuvers in an effort to get judges of different courts in Nigeria to stop his trial. Well, just like we say, they say in medicine, I mean, you are... And you can, you can feel that, you can feel, you can see how much work he is putting into, you know what, I don't want this thing to go on, I want to keep being, but I don't want this being child, I don't want this to happen. Shola, that's what we call using the system hmm. to his favor. There's nothing that he's doing that is wrong. wrong. You go out there, you shop for the best uh, judge that hmm. could hear your case. Hmm. To give you the best possible outcome yeah. that you'd like to have yeah mm -hmm. i mean and, and i'm sure all the things they're trying to do will be done under the law mm -hmm. you know the judge had the right to say look let's wait to determine at this level before you guys can continue i'm sure if it's wrong others in the uh, other members of the will, will overturn him so i agree with them using the system to its fullest i mean mm -hmm. it is done i mean one of the things that we're copying very well from america mm -hmm is this you know the court system so i mean even the way we uh we now challenge our leaders and all that it's something that's very well done mm. here that has and that has established america as the foremost uh uh, uh, open society. We okay. need that in Nigeria. So once again, we'll see how that works out. And we're hoping that we don't get to uh, mention Taraki's name next next Saturday. <laughs> well, we, <laughs> we might, we might not. I, I never can tell. But let's see how that works out. Right? He's, he's the number three man in Nigeria. So uh, he's really, really, he, he's I mean, I, when we even say the number three, he's really a number two because the vice president doesn't really have. That much saying, portfolio, let's say, so he's not, you know, except he's told to go do something, you know. So he does that. Yeah. All right. So uh, moving over, there is um, um, some news about the the EFCC. Uh, the former EFCC boss, um, uh, Lamode Ibrahim Lamode, uh, handed over to the newly appointed acting chairman uh, on Wednesday. Uh, we understand the immediate, immediate past chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Lamode, uh, uh, officially handed over to the newly appointed acting chairman of the Anti-Graft Agency, uh, Ibrahim and Mustafa Magu. Uh, President Buhari sacked Lamode on Monday, uh, November the 9th, and um, th th there you have photos of the handover ceremony. Uh, we're hoping that, you know, the EFCC, I feel, has w was on the low for a bit and then started picking up again once this uh, this new dispensation came on. I don't know. It's, I think it's my maybe it's my thought, but you know, for for a bit it was. We we're just hearing just a tad bit of news here and there from them and what they do, but somewhere in recent times it just picked up. Well, yeah. Again, you said it might just be, you know, what, my thought. Yeah, mm -hmm. but let's really look at it. Even in the six months of the new government, they have only charged one person, Dasuki. Just one person. Just one person. Mm. And even the one person doesn't seem as if it's going anywhere. I, 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 just, I, I don't so, remember either. So I, I still think again that, look, it's a system we're running. And I, let me put it though, it's a system we're trying to create. So let's create it, let's believe in it. If we're going to have an EFCC and they, they have a job to do, they should get it done right. I mean, do uh, I, I don't particularly always enjoy the word that the press uses, that uh, Lamode was sacked by the press, that he was removed. I mean, because if they sacked him, they tell us the reason he was sacked. If it is fraudulent, uh, they don't charge him too. I didn't even, we didn't, we didn't, nobody got any yeah, but of the reasons why I think he was just removed. I mean, look, and the president has that uh, right to do to that. To do that. You know, there are so many agencies that he has a right to change. Whoever, maybe the guy doesn't, agree with his philosophy mm. and then you remove him and, and get someone else there and get someone that you know okay then that you trust okay so we'll, we'll go for another break when we come back we have more stories especially as it concerns uh, japan's first commercial uh, jet uh, taking its maiden flight uh, after the break welcome to azobia market
People assume quality car insurance has to cost more. People assume too much. The truth is, drivers who switched to Allstate last year saved money and got better protection. So get the facts, because you know what they say about people who assume. They pay more for car insurance than you and me. Call Coyote Ajanaku, 9903 State Highway 6 South, Suite 600, Sugarland, Texas 77498. Telephone 713-776-3275. Later, Lucky Dubé there with, uh, I think that's, I have a dream or something. Well, I just knew that song. <laughs> not into, I'm not into <laughs> music. Now. Anyways, welcome <laughs> back, people. Welcome back, Houston. Uh, we st it is still done on NBC. My name is Oluwani Shala. Uh, Professor Sage is here also. And we've been sharing with you trending issues and stories uh, that have, um, you know, made the rounds uh, uh, in the past week. We're going to straight to sports now. This is not my turf. So I'm just going to go straight to Prof. Well, going to handle his business. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, look. Football I know or, or soccer that, yeah. in America, mm -hmm. is, as it is called. I mean, Nigeria actually set uh, a record in uh, in the FIFA in a FIFA tournament. We have won the Under-17 World Cup for the fifth time. Uh, last week Sunday, we played against uh, Mali, a fellow African country. We won that game 2-0. And uh, our player, a player of ours, a striker, set uh, more like a record by scoring 10 goals in the whole tournament. Uh, nobody else has done that. It had always been nine. I mean, so it's an interesting um, uh, uh, win for us. Mm -hmm. We always hope that these things uh, manifest for us to get to uh, higher levels. But uh, like I have said, even as winning uh, under 17 five times now, we haven't even or even ever won the under 20, which is the next uh, level from under 17. But that's not to say anything about uh, our sports development. We seem to be very good at that level and hope we continue to do that. Because talking about the next level, the Super Eagles also played yesterday, a World Cup qualifier, played in Swaziland, played against Swaziland in Swaziland. And Swaziland is ranked, I think, well over 150 in the world. I mean, the game, the game was goalless, and uh, a lot of people are talking about that game and uh, our new coach and uh, what problems. I didn't watch the game, but I've watched a lot of, read a lot of comments and all that. But hopefully we'll get better, because on Tuesday, we actually play the return leg of that game in Port Harcourt. So I hope them the best after that. One striking thing happened also yesterday in the football world. Part of the carnage that happened in um, Paris mm. could have also happened at the stadium. Because at the stadium, I think there were three loud explosions that you could actually hear yeah. during the game. Mm -hmm. And these were suicide bombers killing themselves. I, I guess they couldn't get in. So they, so they did, just had to do whatever they, they did. They did what they had to do outside. I mean, and that's really unfortunate that... Um, because again, I have said, these mass gatherings mm. are really the target for people with uh, issues with the way we live our lives. And it's really frightening. I mean, and that's why we call them terrorists, because the whole idea is to terrorize people, force us to get away from the things we do on a do regular normally, basis. Mm. I mean, on the screen right now is the picture of people pouring on to the to field the of play. Mm because you know, they held a lot of people back from going out. Mm -hmm. Now, funny enough, the president of France was in there, uh, Frank, 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 Franco Hollande mm -hmm. was at the stadium. I mean, you know, so there were quite a number of personalities there. This would have been a huge disaster if anything really bad had happened that at happened. that stadium. Mm -hmm. it, bad things happened in other places, unfortunately, but you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, yesterday also, I mean, we had really that game in uh, France with uh, two past champions, uh, France and Germany. Mm. We also had uh, two other European powers play, uh, England and Spain also. So look, again, the world moves on. It does, actually. Yeah, the it things does. that people want to do. It does. We it cannot does. live our lives on it's fear. Sad, but it does move on. Yeah, so... Uh, that's a little bit about the sports we have for, for today. Uh, we know that, I mean, for those of us that live here, there's college football today, there's uh, the NFL tomorrow mm -hmm. and on Monday. So that, again, is something as we will continue to develop because I know that a lot of Nigerians or Nigerian uh, 
a lot of Nigerian Americans are mm. now into American sports. Yeah. Mm. I think we have I, I think we have some clips mm. to uh, share with you uh, guys out there. So uh, uh, yes, just stay tuned and, and enjoy. We'll be right back. Nigeria on Wednesday, a may still pomp and pageantry, and uh, congratulations to them and to Nigerians as well. All right, it's still done on NBC this morning. Please join the conversation on Twitter at uh, NBC uh, Live, NBC TV Houston. Yes, I uh, would like uh, for you to join the conversation uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube as well. You can also call if you'd like to drop in uh, a thing or two, a line or two on uh, all of the, all of the stories that we've shared uh, this morning on the show uh, the number is 713-340-7514 once again 713-340-7514 uh, we're going to the to japan now um they had the first commercial jet it it, it did take it uh, maiden flight on uh, during the week i can't remember what day exactly it was uh, but uh, that's uh, actually fantastic, uh, the, the very first uh, commercial jet in 50 years. <sighs> it, look, the airline industry mm. is, everybody is looking towards China, you know, with over a billion people. I mean, actually China and India, with over a billion people in both countries, you know, mm. and the rise in income. Mm. Remember that uh, flying is a little bit, Higher, higher price. Yeah, of course. So now when you look to those two countries in particular, that there's a possibility that as their income rises and mm. the, the size of those countries, you know, you need these smaller jets. I mean, right now, Bombardier in Canada is actually almost the mono, monopolizes these small jets, which we want to call small traveling jets. I mean, it carries about 100 people. people. Uh, but Boeing and uh, Airbus actually are the bigger uh, uh, are, are in the business of the bigger jets. I mean, those are the two largest. Uh, Boeing obviously is the American company, mm. and uh, uh, Airbus is the it's a European conglomerate uh, doing that as business. It's owned almost by the European countries, mm. and they they set that up also to really challenge Boeing because everybody was buying from Boeing. There was just one major airline maker. Uh, look, so. Look, it's a big business, it's a great business, I mean, but you must have decent income. What I always tell people, one of the reasons that the airline business does not do well in Nigeria yeah. is because you just don't have enough people flying yet. You know, we don't, I mean, if you want to go to Calabar from Lagos, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I tell you it's 10 o'clock flight, but uh -huh. it, and then you get even there. If, even if five of you are traveling to it, Calabar, there's, you are, a, there's a delay. You're not going. You're not going. You forget it. You're not going to go because <laughs> there's just not enough people mm. yet. Well, well Japan's uh, first commercial jet in 50 years, it did made, uh, make its maiden flight during the week in mm. a breakthrough for the country's long-held ambition to establish an aircraft industry that can compete with some of the major players in global aviation. Uh, the Mitsubishi uh, Regional Jet, MRJ, took off on a one-hour return flight from Nagoya Airport to test Mitsubishi's aircraft corps' ability to bring the 100-seat class plane into service after three years of delays. The unit of Mitsubishi's heavy industries, which built the World War II era, uh, Bombardier Inc., sorry, two era um, zero fighter, is hoping the 47 million regional jet will help its house um, Canada's Bombardier Inc. as the world's second la biggest maker of smaller passenger jets behind Brazil's Embraer SA. So that's 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 for that mm -hmm. for for that and. Uh, a, a really groundbreaking uh, breakthrough for them. We're very, very happy about that. All right, so we're going uh, straight to this very funny story that I stumbled up on uh, the internet um, <laughs> during the week. Prof, I don't know what it is that you're going to say about this, but I'm going to share it anyways. So Zimbabwe's Mr. Ugly Pageant has recorded a number of entries. There's actually this pageant in Zimbabwe. It's called Mr. Ugly. 
I really don't know who came about that or who brought the idea to have a pageant that celebrates people who are, should I say, less pretty? And they've actually recorded yeah. newer entries, as in the, the number of entries this time is really very, very huge. You know, like you said, you don't know what I'm going to say, but look, what <laughs> I'm going to say know. is very simple. Like, I really want to know. Having lived in America, I mean, that's really, I mean, look, you're killing people, they're killing their self-esteem, you know, this, and, this is self-esteem culture and all that. I mean, I'm happy for those guys that they can come out and really... Uh, describe themselves as being ugly. I always say, look, we, we, we know the uh, usual phrase, I mean, uh, beauty is in the eye of, of the, the beholder. Beholder, And it's skin I mean, deep and it's inside. Yeah, I mean, those so ugly your... guys have wives. You <laughs> they know? do. And so, for whatever reason, it, it, it is very funny. Yeah, it is funny, but uh, very funny, I very think there funny. should be a limit to, uh, I mean, this, look, we, we live in a country here in America that, you know, you almost, I mean, you don't, you, I mean, the word, you cannot tell someone that they are fat. Mm -hmm. Even my doctor be gets very careful with me. With, with the words, you can't throw it around. Health health health, health. You know, you, know you, look, you look a little bit big. The, the, the <laughs> man who actually reigns as, as Zimbabwe's Mr. Ugly mm -hmm. uh, has tough competition this year. And we understand that for the, for the first time since the competition began in 2011, organizers will hold preliminary rounds to whittle the number of hopefuls <laughs> from 36 to 12. Uh, who will compete in the November 20 fin uh, finale? Uh, the, the organizer said that, and he says, We're looking for natural ugliness. I don't know what they really mean by natural <laughs> ugliness. Is it color of the skin? Facial features. The facial, he said, I mean, facial, fe facial features count the most. Yeah, but what is wrong about the big nose, big lips? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, kinky hair. These are black features. Really. Are you asking so, you no, I mean, it, I'm, I mean, I don't have a lot of hair, though, but, you know, I, I've got a big head. I'm dark, very dark in complexion and all that. Maybe, I mean, I don't know how much it pays. I might go and run. I don't that, know, uh, but we will follow that, that story project, and you know. we'll definitely bring you more as it unfolds in the coming week. It is still done on NBC this morning. Please feel mm -hmm. free to call us, 713-340-7514. Uh, tweet at us at NBC TV Houston. We'd like to uh, hear from you. Thank you very much. We will be back with more stories and then we'll yeah, probably wrap things up a bit. We'll still have more stories, one or two more stories to share with you. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Still done on NBC this morning. Uh, Luan is here, and uh, we're still expecting your calls. We, we got a couple, but then you know, you came in uh, during the break. Uh, 713. 340-7514. Once again, 713-340-7514. You can tweet at NBC TV Houston uh, for your comments and contributions as well. Uh, you can go to our YouTube page and our Facebook page as well. We'll be giving out the address very shortly. Uh, but we will be going to this news. Uh, Obi Azekwesili Abike Dabiri Erewa listed among the top 250 most influential women in the world. Uh, I don't know what to say about influence. I mean, these are two women that every, a lot of people said they might be ministers. They couldn't mm. even influence themselves to get to on the ministerial <laughs> list. And then, you know, look, I don't know how this works. I don't mm. know how they select them. I mm. don't know what they mean by influence. Um, it's, it's, a, it's actually um, a list of influential women are being proactive at what they do in their respective fields. I think we have a call. Okay, let's take that call. Let's take that. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Very well. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Shola. We are very happy to have you on board with us. Go ahead with your question, sir. What's your name, please? What's your name? My name is Shola Ogunpao. All right. Very, you're very welcome. Go ahead. Yeah. Can you believe me, Shola? I sympathize with the friends. These are terrible attacks that happen in the world. It's very terrible. But it's it, very really funny. You know, in Nigeria, Boko Haram, 200 people die like every day. I would not hear so much. So it happened in France. And the whole world is like, oh, um, it's happening in France. So it happened in Nigeria. Maybe well, how come the whole world don't rally around us and mess up this issue once and for all? 
All right. Thank you very much for the question, sir. Thank you. Let me let, let, yeah, let you, me. you should. You <laughs> should let answer me that. answer that. Yeah. Uh, this is an issue of country profile. I mean, yes, it's big news around the world because it's France. Yeah. But let's even go one step further. If it was America, it would be huge news mm. in America. Uh, countries, unfortunately, have profiles. And the Nigerian profile... Is not so... Yeah. No, in Africa. <laughs> oh, but it's the same thing. In Africa... We're a huge deal. News. Yeah, we're huge. We're here, but internationally... But internationally, so yeah, countries just have profiles. I mean, it's mm. unfortunate. And uh, look, uh, every life really counts, you know. Mm. I mean, what Boko Haram does in Nigeria mm. is really... But look, I, I, and, I, and I hope it never happens. But look, if it, Boko Haram also strikes in Lagos, that would be huge news. It's just... The, the, I, I uh, like that. Let's just hope it never Yeah, happens. I mean, let's hope it never happens. Because it countries happens. and even areas have profile. You know, look, how many of us really know some of the towns that have been mentioned in the north? So even that, you, you, you almost do not link a lot. You don't attach a lot to oh, it. Important so you can see. I mean, CNN does cover Boko Haram, but I mean, you know, the major news uh, networks do cover. To cover yeah. it. it might not be as big as France. They don't have someone on uh, on ground mm. in the north of Nigeria, you know. Mm. So everybody has some kind of guy in Paris this mm. morning. Mm. True. So it's, it's okay, about so country profile. We, we hope that answers your question, sir. Thank you very much once again for calling. Uh, don't forget, you can please do tweet at uh, NBC TV Houston. Uh, let's have your comments and contributions on uh, this morning's uh, show. Uh, I, th I think we touched on that, and we were talking about that. Should we go back to that or move yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, influential women. Look, mm. I know both women very well, actually. Uh, mm. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Erewa was mm. actually where, uh, where not meet, but were at the university about the same time mm. in uh, now OAU, but then University of Ife. So yeah, she's been a, an activist. She's actually been very forward thinking. Mm. I've liked a lot of the things she did when she was in the uh, Congress in Nigeria. Mm. Uh, but when they use the word most influential, twenty nine feet. I, I, I think I think that the, the, the most I just collated. Uh, uh, those names. There's there's J K Rowling uh, mm -hmm. in there as well. There's uh, Hillary Clinton in there well, as well. Okay, like, proactive in their respective fields. Well, yeah. When they pro look, let's look at J K Rowling. She's a writer, so mm. she's influential. She influences a lot of kids. You know, I mean, some people don't like the books, but she's a huge bestseller. Yes, yeah, she now, is. Now that is influence. Melinda Gates runs, you know, with her husband. Okay, so you're just not story. very comfortable with the uh, uh, the uh, Abike uh, being in the list. Is that what this? No, is? no, no. I'm just saying that you know, look. Yeah. When you use the word influence, mm. they must have, have an impact. I, Abike Dabe is in the news, but really what is the impact of her being in the news? The news. It's the same thing with uh, Mrs. Uh, okay. Ezekwe Silly. She, she's, she's actually really very proactive uh, when it comes to politics and uh, speaking her mind oh, on, I just on, most, on most social media platforms, especially Twitter. Look, I'm on Twitter too, but I, 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 I mean, nobody pays any attention to me, so, you know. And I'm, on, I'm not even saying they're, I'm in the same get, group. They're going to get you on the list. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not even saying I'm on the same uh, <laughs> notoriety with both of them, but, you know, for heaven's sake, you know, when they make up lists like this, I kind of just kind of overlook All right, it, so going you know. to the very last story before we call it uh, a day. Uh, uh, on Tuesday, the Tanzanian president, uh, John uh, Magufuli, mm -hmm. uh, actually banned uh, foreign travels by government officials uh, and he ordered them to visit villages is that even possible look it no look, government official under my administration should do any foreign travel i'm not yoruba but let me use let me say this in your knowledge <laughs> so look if your country needs to go mm. to do something that's important to the country outside you really have to I mean, how much how much can you get done in tanzania to mm. be in, in this global age I mean, you can say we can lessen foreign travels. Mm. I mean, like you, the, the, the minister or whoever is going, go alone instead of taking two, three assistants or something. You can do that. But for you to say you ban it and then to go to the village, can, you, the villages. can you talk... Uh, is that even possible? Look, can you talk fi uh, international finance in, in, a, in a Tanzanian village? <laughs> with a rural woman. Uh, you know, some hey, of these head of states are, you know, are running amok with some kind of discipline that they're trying to enforce within the society. Mm. I mean, it's not going to work.
All right, uh, we hope that we've been able to furnish you with as much information as uh, is necessary for you uh, today on, on the show. Uh, we will be here again uh, next week. Uh, God willing. Yes. Yes. Yes, we will be here. Please uh, don't hesitate to tweet at us, NBC TV Houston. Uh, follow us on Facebook as well, a Facebook page, mm -hmm. NBC uh, Live TV Houston. Okay, and of, of course on YouTube as well to watch our past episodes as well. My name still remains Olu Anishala. Thank you so much, Hussein, for joining us today. Prof, you want to say your goodbyes? Yes, and my name is Patrick Amol so we'll see your you all Your Twitter handle, week. you have a Twitter handle. Yeah, my Twitter handle is PJ Osage. All right, so mm. thank you so much, Hussein. Have a very, very a beautiful weekend.